Hey everybody, how's it going? Joe's Neon here. Just want to welcome you folks back to uh, The Art of Neon Part 3. I want to thank everybody for such a wonderful response on Parts 1 and 2. It was really nice that everybody took time to watch those videos and found interest in it and what I was doing there and I'm, I'm glad you felt as though I explained things fairly well. Um, so anyhow, yeah, and thanks. I hope I answered some of your questions anyhow. I tried to. Um, and again, sorry about how many times I had to move the camera and the shakiness and all that, but we're going to do all that over again. I just got to get these shots so that I can, you guys can really see um, the different parts of this art here. So anyhow, let's get going. Um, right here, as you can see, there's our GL. Okay, it's all completed. And again, if you look down on those electrodes, they have to be right over those X marks on the pattern or they will not fit into the housing. Okay, here's our unit, GL. All right, now let's come over here to our manifold, uh, bombarding station, pumping station, charging station, there's different words for it. Um, so over here, I gotta show you guys a couple more tools of the trade that, that are used. Um, for this particular area. Um, one of the tools is a high frequency spark coil. Okay, what this tool here does is this tool um, emits a high frequency spark. As you can see right there on the end of that. Okay, it also emits ozone. But what it allows me to do is it allows me to check for vacuums in my system, make sure that I'm up to to all good vacuum, I have no leak, and I can show you guys the gases. Now, again, there's only two colors of gas. Neon, which is red, and argon, which is a pale lavender color. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, so you have just the two colors. You have blue and red. And like I said, all your other color variations come from the powdered coating in the glass. So let me move this, all right? Now, what I have here is a choke. That's gonna regulate how much power I'm sending to the, to the unit here. And in the back there is a 60,000 volt transformer. The hell with killing you, that thing will blow your arm right the hell off. And I'll show you what I mean quick here. If I take my two leads, and I bring them like that, let me set you down, make sure I can get that good. All right, we're gonna blow an arc, you ready kids? Here we go. Get just a hair closer there. Hair closer. Okay, here we go. Some serious power there kids. There ain't no doubt about that. So, gotta be very careful here. It's heads up big time. You make one mistake, you ain't gonna make that mistake again because you ain't gonna be around to make it again. So anyhow, that's one of the tools that we use. This is another one right here. This tool here is called the tipping torch. And you're gonna see me use that right now because what we have to do is we have to connect our unit to our manifold system. And so we gotta make a little weld right there. So I'm gonna try to get you guys on a tripod and see if I can zoom in on that. Bear with me here. All right. Okay. All right, I think we can see that pretty good. Maybe a little bit closer. Move you up just a little bit. All right, there we go. All right, in just a hair. There we go. Okay. Now we're gonna do again over here. I have a blowhose over here too. Okay. Always gotta have a blowhose whenever you're making, you're working with the glass hot. Okay. So here we go. We got the tipping torch, and we're gonna make this weld right here. Hot. Okay. 
Okay. We're connected to the system. Now I'm gonna, let's see, I'm gonna zoom you out here a little bit. Okay. I'll explain what the next step is. I have to regulate how hot I'm getting this glass. And I do that by using a very high tech piece of thermo equipment, a piece of newspaper. I just put a piece of newspaper on the glass, and when that comes up to temperature, which is approximately 454 degrees, thanks to Ray Bradbury, we got our temperature gauge on there. When that paper starts to burn, I know I'm up to good temperature. Now, why are we doing this? Why, why do we have to put it on a vacuum? Why do we got to get it all hot? Well, inside of that tube is a dirty environment. It's not pure in there. It's all full of molecules and whatever's going on in the air here, plus me breathing in it. So, you know, we have to create a perfectly clean environment within this unit here in order to introduce one of the rare gases, okay? The way we do that is by heating it up to 450 degrees at least. I like to go more like 520 degrees. We connect our leads to go to our transformer. That's gonna shoot an arc through the neon tube. That arc is going to heat that glass up. It's going to incinerate all the impurities. Now, where the glass gets close to itself at these bends, I have to use a piece of mica so that the, the current of electricity doesn't try and take a shortcut and shoot through one of my bends, okay? Now, I've got my power cranked up here. What we're going to do now is we're going to start it Put it under a vacuum, we're gonna start drawing air out. We have to get the vacuum down to 100 microns before I can shoot an electrical arc through this whole entire tube. So, right now our pump is drawing down, it's pulling out all of the, the, uh, all of the air inside of that tube so that I can, I can strike an arc through that tube, okay? I'm just going to let that set for another minute there. Just make sure that I, I'm down to 100 microns. I don't use a gauge, but I can hear the way my vacuum pump responds, is, responds excuse me, when, I, um, when I'm down to a good enough vacuum where I can shoot an arc in. I think I've just reached that point. So this is where it gets pretty funky, kids. <clears throat> I'm going to shoot an arc through this tube. We're gonna heat it up and we're gonna suck all the impurities out and we're gonna create a perfectly clean environment within that tube in order to introduce a rare gas and make me out. Here we go. Okay, you see those pink colors in there? Pink, purple colors? Those are all impurities. Every now and then you might even see a little sparkle, something else burning up. Now the tube is heating up. I'll go, I will continue this for about, oh, I'd say 30 seconds. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna shut the vacuum off, which allows me to, to climb to a higher temperature within the tubes quicker. Okay. See, it's looking pretty good right now as far as being clean. We want a nice whitish light blue look to it, but don't be fooled. Now let's burn them up. Watch the color change here. We're gonna get, you're gonna see, we're gonna come to a temperature where the impurities are just gonna start burning right up in there. And we're getting there. You can see the electrodes are starting to get red. We want those electrodes to be cherry red. Okay, there goes the paper starting to burn. We got some we got some discoloration here at the electrodes, but that's okay, that'll go away. You see that color I have going right there, that whitish white blue? 
That's exactly what we're looking for. Our electrodes are cherry red and our newspaper's burning. Let's let her cool. Speaking of cool, that is cool, right? Whoa! Sorry about that, kids. So, yeah, um, like I said before, thanks a lot, folks, for the super response on the first two videos. Um, I'm glad that you guys really got a kick out of this um, this whole process of Nia. Now, I'll show you over here. I don't have my glass in yet to make the green. I'm waiting for the glass to come in to make these green units, okay? These are all the old green units. You can see they're all stained. Mine will all be nice and white, broken, you know? But here's all the new babies. Look at all that shiny, pretty glass. A dozen arrows for you. They used to be on what's called a chaser. So remember when the arrows would move and point your way into a establishment? Look at this OT, come on. TO, I mean, in auto, ATO. What a pain in the ass that was. But I don't know, I guess it keeps me young, right? And another, I got a question from my buddy JC, boss of the swamp. He says to me, he says, Joe, I'm surprised you don't have a PBR neon sign in your shop. Well, JC, booyah. How's that? Ha ha! Dum 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 PBR. Nice. So what we got to do is we got to let that unit cool. That's where we're at right now. Look, can't see the pap sign. So uh, once that unit gets down to be about room temperature. Um, no, uh, not room temperature. It gets down to be about 98 degrees, right around in there. I like to pump it then, and um, <clears throat> hopefully we get a nice looking unit out of it. But I just want to explain the technological, uh, theoretical side of neon. What makes neon light? Why does it light? Well, let me grab a couple of electrodes. All right. Let's look at it this way. Here's two electrodes, okay? Pretend that these are speakers in a nightclub, in a dance club. These are the sound system, the speakers. In between the speakers is a tube. In that tube are all the people hanging out in the nightclub, which, you know, are, is really um, electrons within the gas, okay? but the electrons are the people. When you turn the speakers on or you turn the transformer on, everybody starts dancing. Those electrodes start bouncing off each other and what they do is the friction of those electrodes bouncing off each other causes a millisecond shot of light. Happening a million times over within one second, you have a solid light. So as long as the speakers are on or the transformer's on, the people are dancing. And that's what neon is. It's just a bunch of electrons grooving out inside a tube. So come on over here. Let's check this out. See how this is. See how this is doing. Woo! Duh. She's still pretty warm, but she's getting there. She's getting there. I'll show you guys a couple pictures. That was from 2005. 14-pound carp I shot with my bow right through the top of the head. There's a nice seven-pointer. You've seen that in my room. Look at that bullet hole right in the neck. I shot that deer at 175 yards with my 7 mil 08. It was awesome. There's a 25-pound king salmon from uh, up on Lake Ontario. Nice spider web, say. Hey, there's my first deer with a bow. 2004. Nice big doe. Look at that old Oneida. Yeah. And I picked that puppy up out of the garbage. Somebody threw him away down the street. Big old wild boar. I love it. All right, let's check it out. How are we doing here? Okay, we're good. Now, for this segment right here, um, I'm not going to zoom you in. And hopefully my video does not cut out. I might have to do this pumping in, um, in two, two parts. Okay, so what we got to do now is we got to shut our vacuum off. We gotta close our gauge. That's gonna go up and down and tell us how much pressure. Now I'm gonna start putting the gas in it. I'm gassing it. I'm 
Nice fill, nice fill. I like it. All right, now let's flash it, see if we got any color. You ready? Can you see it? Oh, oh, we got nice color. Now what I'm gonna do, I just want to kind of bring you back down here real quick. This is kind of cool, I can show you this. Okay, now remember, this is under a vacuum. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my tipping torch and I'm gonna go around that little tube, that little five millimeter tube, and it's gonna cave in, it's gonna suck in, and that's how we seal the tube off. Here we go, sealing off the tube. It's gonna go, there it goes. Now we're gonna pull it up. Whoa! And then I just anneal it, anneal it, make it, everybody cools at the same time. Reset my gauges. I'm ready for my next unit. Whoa. All right. This is what we got here. Just gonna turn you guys around real quick. Bring you over here. Take our newspaper off. Okay, there's our unit. What do you say, we, uh, we hook some wires to it? Okay. Ready? Bang! There's our GL. What do you think of that, kids? Pretty cool, the Art of Neon. With Joe's Neon. Wicked stuff. The nightclub is open. Everybody's in there boogieing, bouncing off each other, lighting up. Yeah, I don't know. I've been doing this for 18 years, and every time I plug a unit in and watch it burn, it's just as exciting as the very first one I ever made. So anyhow, I just want to thank everybody again for checking out this whole series, The Art of Neon. It was overdue. A lot of people asked me to do it, but I'm not going to be done with this video. There's definitely going to be a part four, and I'm going to take you to the sign company that has this restoration, that is doing this restoration, and um, I'm going to show you the sign on when they got it all lit in the shop, and then I'm going to try to go down on location and show it to you lit at night once it's installed. I want to show you another really cool piece I did. Check her out. Whoop. Oh, I didn't fix the transformer yet. All right, no big deal there. But anyhow, I'm just gonna leave you with that parting shot, folks. Crack yourselves a cold beer, and uh, everybody stay safe, stay warm. Look for another video coming.